Hello and welcome to India Today. This is Hesha Chima and joining me on my show here right now is Sanjana Sanghi. Hello. Hello, hello. No, I want to start off by asking you that the field that you are in is kind of really demanding and we all get that because facing the camera is not an easy job. We always have to look our prim and proper best but there are times where we really want to let ourselves down. Yeah. I want to know what does Sanjana do in moments like these when she's like got too much going on, she has to look her fashionable best yeah. but she's not up for it mentally. How do you pep yourself up? Oh my up? god, that's a golden question honestly. I think that you know the answer to that what I've realized like this is my now i mean since dil bechara release this is about my fourth year yeah. of being like a full fledged leading actor so to say and i've realized that over time just going with the mood of the day sometimes does help you know like yeah. when we're having this conversation for example just last night was chamkeela's premiere and i had to head there after a full day of work so sometimes you're like how are you going to get into another look and do the whole thing but It's like Imtiaz Sir's film, and it's a big deal for yeah. me. Like I'm emotional about it, so I like fully stuck to the theme and did the whole thing. So I think I've really started following what my heart says, what my mood is, mm. and um, and sometimes you just turn up in a white shirt and blue jeans if Fab. if life is too <laughs> too chaotic. <laughs> That's true. But uh, for the most part, at least the feedback that I sense from like audiences and fans also is that they like seeing you in. all moods you know yeah. sometimes dressed up sometimes not sometimes acknowledging that you've had a long day yeah so because one wants to be here for a long time so the only way that can happen is through just being authentic that's true yeah but are you someone who really prioritizes like self care because i don't <laughs> well if my mother was listening to this question her <laughs> uh, she would be turning red because I just think that in your twenties you take it for granted, yeah. and how, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm 27 now, but I remember earlier. So it was just like, of course, the skin and hair is going to behave. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> who needs to drink water and who needs to wash their face after a long day? Like none of that is important. Or then, when you enter your late twenties, then. life teaches you <laughs> in wicked ways i think so, it's the hormones that teach us in way wicked ways my god all of it yeah like yeah. exhaustion starts increasing mm. everything starts crescendoing but so i would say that where i'm at with self care is that being an actor kind of expedited that journey mm. because when i was growing up you didn't have product going into your skin and hair every yeah. day now like if you're being put under the brush every day that means that your skin is going through that much more damage it's yeah. just how it is so i'm you're forced to figure out ways to protect it but sanjana tell me something correct me if i'm wrong you know i have seen your appearances online as well and yes 9 out of 10 times if it's not like an event event you're really yourself like you don't take too much effort to give in to the pressure of looking a certain way right. having your hair or makeup done a certain way fair to say you're a minimalist Absolutely, I think you. That's an accurate analysis. Like, even if I'm getting ready, my getting ready will be a minimal version of it. Mm. Uh, and I think that's just how I've been growing up. You know, like all my friends will tell you in school that I was that girl who didn't know anything about makeup. For mm. example, I only knew one kajal. And when we got into the eleventh grade, you just put this <laughs> one thick line of kajal, and that's like you've gotten ready. uh but uske beyond i knew nothing mm. um and never felt it was never something that i felt the need to do mm. and i honestly don't feel like makeup makes i don't some people it really enhances how they look yeah in my case i sometimes feel like it it makes me feel like not myself if i do too much mm. so i tend to just keep it as easy as possible and is that the same with your fashion as well I think so going back to that you know like today also I could have like fully but I love like, the vibe <laughs> yeah this is fashion for me is my fashion yeah and in the sense that I also feel like I want to I want to with my film journey discover my off duty style hmm. you know it doesn't necessarily come to you from day 1 correct um 
I feel like I'm discovering it now, like even whether it's our airport looks. And I quite, I have to say, I enjoy that little yeah. bit of an airport vibe. Deep down, na, it's yeah. a guilty pleasure. Something dress about up. that I've been enjoying. Like mm. that, I'll do full disclosure, and that I've made like my full experimentation zone. Ah, chalo, yeah. And then like people at the lounge or when we're boarding will tell me like, you are, it's so hot. Why are you wearing a trench? <laughs> And I'm like, gotta do it. <laughs> Plus, it's the AC. Listen, we feel cold also. Yeah. So my threshold for cold is pathetic. Also, like Bali, we're extra, right? Yeah. So now these things come along yeah, with it. This yeah. weather it's appropriateness and all doesn't work. Important. <laughs> you know, so somebody like me who sort of battles body image issues. Yeah, it's it's been there because everybody has a different journey, and yeah. like it's crazy. Um, of course, it's gotten better over time, and I've gotten more comfortable talking about it. Right. Um, and I think I'll tell you where it stems from, and I want to know if that ever happened with you. For girls who are a lot into, like, say, fashion, beauty, makeup, or whatever, they tend to like box into not being intelligent or probably mm-hmm. being looked down upon. And I think that's not the case, right? Like, it's Absolutely. totally the other way around. Have you faced something like that? Like, or I have a hundred percent. I think more than. You know, sometimes these are things that people may not say to your face, but they definitely assume. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. What you said is bang on. That just the basis of your physicality, you will be declared as oh, she mustn't be into, she mustn't be intellectual, she yeah. mustn't be capable. And um, I remember, I, I don't know if it was Anushka or Tapsi or one of them in their interviews. You know, they they said that for any any self-made girl who has dreams and And makes it anywhere, yeah. not only in the film industry, but anywhere. They are they are made of steel, and their brains run at the speed of lightning. Whoa! Uh, so <laughs> I don't think I don't think you can get anywhere in today's world if if you aren't if you aren't smart, if yeah. you aren't intelligent and committed. Yeah. And the way you look, if anything, I guess should just add to it. It should never take away from it. Yeah. But even me, like I think. You know this that I've been very nerdy my whole life, and like academia has been your my, thing, my thing. And given a chance, I'll go back to college or an institution any day. But I have to whenever that comes up, it's always like, oh, like oh, you went to Lady Shri Ram in Delhi University, and then oh, you like you were a gold medalist, and yeah. so why did you become an actor? Hmm. I think it's more for actors. Yeah, somehow we believe that. These Education and looks don't go hand in hand. Yeah, or like to be an actor, you don't have to be an intelligent person. Yeah, that is a huge misconception. And frankly, like whether it's Shah Rukh Khan or Amitabh Bachchan, they're all they're all legends when it comes to they're all from DU, yeah. did the toughest of courses, and that's why they're running like huge businesses as well, right? Yeah. Along with being actors. Yeah. So. so that. I think just by doing these con- misconceptions get broken because you may keep saying it. Yeah. But that's, but that's never not going to Yeah. True. But you know we're all I mean kind of used to having people giving us advices because sabko advice dena acha lagta yeah, hai. It's a fact. I want to know what's the worst beauty advice and the worst fashion advice you ever got. The worst. Yeah, the worst. Oh best um we we'll eventually use our own brain yeah, exactly. i want to know worst one i mean i would hate for them to know that it was the worst <laughs> we won't But name anybody <laughs> we'll just talk about the advice oh my god you know the worst is just this is this is not glam enough you know there's this thing of huh. that if it's a big award show then unless there's bling and drama it's not a red carpet look which <laughs> which i don't <laughs> agree to at all yeah So if you see any of my red carpet looks, they'll be as understated as possible. Mm. So just that, like more is better, is the worst advice I've gotten. Perfect. You know? So that's like for fashion. That stands true for beauty as well. Like mm. even even in a beauty look, to be like you know, let's just go in with the bronzer also. Let's do eyes also. <laughs> let's do lips. Let's do everything in one go. Is is just too much. It's yeah. It's not great advice, but um. I was, I mean, this might sound a little sad and like it was kind of rude, but I was actually on a consult with my childhood doormat, who mm. I've not spoken to in like a decade. She had once seen me when I was a kid, and cut to she's seeing me now. No. And uh, the uh, 
I consulted her because I had an infection, mm. but I got lots of free fun <laughs> advice from Most her. Key advice. <laughs> she recommended that I shouldn't smile as much uh, on red carpet mm. because she's like, you know, बहुत थोड़ा आप control करो अपने smile को. <laughs> Which is <laughs> supposed to be the most beautiful asset that we all women have. And I was like, thanks. Like here's women crushing women's confidence for no reason at all. Oh God. And this is a bad advice. Yeah, I mean Loki I'm almost hoping she's listening to this so she realizes that I felt really bad. And uh, I got some advice related to my this that the other. Mm, which was not related to anything that you that I was asking for. So unsolicited advice is a common factor I think for yeah, actors. It's crazy. Yeah. But but tell me something, you know, we all have our days, right? Like good skin days, bad skin days, good hair days, bad hair days. Well, good we all enjoy and cherish, but the bad ones are the tricky yeah. ones, right? Tell me, how do you like navigate yourself through those bad hair and skin days? Because oh. listen, confidence takes a toll, yeah. It's yeah, a fact. it does. Of course, it does. I think a these bad hair and skin days' ka frequency has increased with <laughs> in <laughs> again the late twenties. Hormones? <laughs> are you listening? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that is one thing. But I, I figured some hacks now, where. Bad hair day, mate. Just slide that stuff into a sleek bun. Like this, just end the story with a sleek bun. Yeah. Because um, that I've realized, like you know, like we were saying, living around in Bombay now with our pap culture and stuff. Yeah. It's any time the photography stuff can happen any time. So that is for a bad hair day. I also have this habit of um, you'll see me in a lot of caps. Ah, so that's like your bad that's head. That's my day. yeah. That's like next time uh, if you. it's getting oily from here, just wear just wear a cap. <laughs> you know, if I text you next time, you know, hi, Sanjay, you're having a bad head day. Yeah, yeah, just, you know it. <laughs> you like, know no, it's just my airport it's look. It's just my yeah. I've tried to convince people it's my aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetic. but really, it's me just coming up with. The, um, and of course, you must have heard this again. We always were like, even I used to wonder growing up, why do actors wear? Sunglasses at uh-huh. night. Why? <laughs> and now, when I get out of like an international flight, I'm like, oh, <laughs> need, need. So that's another very obvious hack. Mm. But for skin, I think the other hack is that I've just started to, you know, I can sense on some days that it's tired. Mm. You can sense that it's tired when, when like you're putting cream on your face and it's it's not sliding. Yeah, it's like getting stuck somewhere. So then I just I just let let my face be, hmm. and I go about my day even if it's work related. Of course, being on camera is a different thing, yeah. but I just I'm like now let it be. It has to just breathe and be. So that's yeah. something I do for the skin, um, because no no ointments and all of that really work. Yeah, you know. Uh, and another hack for the skin I've noticed is that whenever my food goes here and there. Actually, for hair also, whenever like I'm not eating right or not eating healthy enough, mm. it shows instantly. Yeah. Um. So luckily, I don't. I don't diet in any way. I eat like ghar ka khana, but sumptuous amounts of khana. Um. But when I'm like traveling and I'm skipping a meal because you're having hectic yeah. days. Suddenly, I'll notice that hair breakage has increased. Mm. Um, the this the face is looking tired, all of that. Yeah. So, fo- what you're what you're actually eating is the start of it. Yeah. I feel like everything comes from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First Thank all, you for removing time and sharing your beauty, fashion secrets, and a lot more deeper. Because I feel fashion, beauty in general to me, and I think to every girl is a lot more than just the superficial absolutely. part. Absolutely, I'm so glad. I'm so glad we did this, and I feel like I'm I'm more clear about what I should and shouldn't do after <laughs> this conversation, which is important. Thank Perfect. you, Aisha. Thank you for your time, Sanjay. Of course.